Welcome to HamCram 2018. You are about to embark on a groundbreaking journey into the world of amateur radio. This class is designed to acquire your technical class license. So sit back, enjoy the ride. Sponsored by Pittsfield Community TV. All right, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Sean. We'll be doing, uh, it's like chapter two here. And looks like your first radio. So we're looking at a, uh, on the screen here, it's a handheld. Uh, to me, that looks like a tribander. Uh, so that's two meter, 1.25 centimeter, and 70, or 1.25 meter, and 70 centimeters. Uh, those are pretty common VHF handheld bands. Um, and the top one there. So your PTT is the most common method of activating a phone transmitter. The push to talk function switches between receive and transmit. It's usually the biggest button on the side. PTT is activated by a single button attached to the microphone or on the side of your handheld. There are many frequencies you will want to access quickly. Storing a frequency in a memory channel is a way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency on your transceiver. Super nice for repeaters and uh, simplex frequencies that you use quite a bit. The disadvantage of a rubber duck, which is the antenna that comes with most handheld radio transceivers, is that it does not transmit or receive as effectively as a full-size antenna. They usually give you just enough to pick up uh, most VHF frequencies. If you attempt to transmit with the rubber duck antenna inside your vehicle, your signal will barely make it out of the windows. This is a good reason not to use a rubber duck inside your car. Signals can be significantly weaker w than when it is outside the vehicle. For vehicle use, consider a magnetic mount antenna. It's you vehicles, a lot of, lot of metal, it's pretty much a Faraday cage. If you really need more than five watts of power that comes out of your handheld, you could purchase an RF power amplifier. The RF power amplifier is a device that increases low power output from a handheld transceiver. Most modern amateur radio stations now use computers for many different functions. A few ways a computer can be used as part of an amateur radio station are as follows. For logging contacts and contact information. Super, super awesome. You can learn a lot about all kinds of different stations. Sending and or receiving CW. For generating and decoding digital signals. FT8, JT65, PSK31, radio teletype. Um, a lot of, that's not really, it is digital, but um, a lot of that you'll see. Frequency modulation, or FM, is a type of modulation that is most commonly used for VHF and UHF voice repeaters. FM modulation is also commonly used for VHF packet radio transmissions. The approximate bandwidth of a VHF F repeater FM phone signal is between 10 and 15 kilohertz. So if you're on, let's say, 14652, you're going to go, you know, keep in mind your signal is going to go almost all the way to 14635, or I'm sorry, <laughs> 52, so you'd be going up to 65. How wide would your FM signal be on the air? That's determined by the amplitude height of your modulating signal. The amplitude of the modulating signal is what determines the amount of deviation of an FM as opposed to PM signal. When the deviation of an FM transmitter is increased, its signal occupies more bandwidth. All right, pool question two. What is meant by the term PTT? It is D. What is a way to enable quick access to a favorite frequency on your transceiver? It is B. What is a disadvantage of the rubber duck antenna supplied with most handhelds? Correct. What is a good reason not to use a rubber duck inside your car? Yes. Basically, it shields it all inside, bounces right back down. What device increases the low power output from a handheld transceiver? It is B. 
which type of modulation is most commonly used for VHF and UHF voice repeaters? D. What is the approximate bandwidth of a VHF repeater FM phone signal? Is C. What determines the amount of deviation of an FM signal? It is C. So your voice, the amount of volume you use, really, it can drive your signal. It can even push it over, uh, you know, that 10 to 15 kilohertz. So uh, gain is important. What happens when the deviation of an FM transmitter is increased? It is A. It's going to occupy more bandwidth. What type of modulation is most commonly used for VHF packet radio transmissions? Oops, I'm sorry. It is FM. How might a computer be used as part of an amateur radio station? Yes. You can do everything. You can do a lot of things with the computer now. Um, and that is the end of the slides on that one. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, we'll move on to the next chapter, which is repeaters. A repeater station is a type of amateur radio station that simultaneously transmits the signal of another station on a different channel. The uh, auxiliary repeater, or space stations, are stations that automatically transmit the signals of other amateur radio stations. So if you have a, a repeater, you have a small radio in your car or handheld, you have it set to the proper frequencies for the repeater, you talk, it goes to the uh, repeater site on top of a tall building or a mountain, and it gets rebroadcast on a different frequency. That's why you have the uh, two sets when you program your, uh, your radio. The difference between the repeater transmit and receive frequencies describes the common meaning of the term repeater offset. That's what I was just referring to. Your local repeater will listen on one frequency and transmit on another. Most new radios will set this offset automatically for you, but not all of them. The most common repeater frequency offset on a two meter band is plus and minus 600 kilohertz. The most common repeater frequency offset on a 70 centimeter band, that's the 440 area, is plus or minus five megahertz. The following common problems might cause you to be able to hear but not access the repeater even when transmitting on the proper offset. Now, let's see, the repeater receiver may require an audio tone burst for access. The repeater receiver may require a CTCSS tone burst for access. The repeater receiver may require a DCS tone for access. So there's three different uh, ways of uh, the repeater can know that you're there. It can be locked out. So uh, it started a long time ago as proprietary. But uh, the most common referred to is the CTSS, CTCSS, commonly referred to as CTSS tones. Uh, that's who you'll see the R RPL tones, private line tones. That's the uh, most common in this area and uh, most common throughout the country now. But they are, they will be on the test, the uh, tone burst, the CTCSS, and the DCS tones. The, uh, C the CTSS tone is what commonly referred to as a PL tone. And that opens up the uh, repeater so it knows that you're talking. Otherwise, it's blocked to help uh, keep uh, spurious signals from going out from the stronger base, base station. It's the same thing as a PL tone. The terms came about, um, they were uh, copyrighted. One company had PL, one company had CTSS, and then the, um, somebody came up with a better idea for the, uh, they thought for the DC uh, 
S tones, which uh, can also activate remote equipment on like trucks and stuff like that. So uh, they used it for signaling. Um, but the, the most common today is the CT uh, CSS. I just don't want to confuse you, which is commonly known as a PL tone. Uh, you may hear, like on uh, Mount Greylock, uh, the uh, 91 repeater, the PL tone is 162.2, uh, and that's the uh, CTCSS uh, tone frequency. Uh, just your call sign is often transmitted in place of a CQ on uh, the repeaters and on two meters. Uh, some parts of the country still use CQ, from what I've heard. Uh, on the two meters, but most of the time you just uh, throw out your call sign or and your call sign and say listening or something to uh, let people know that you're there and if somebody feels like uh, having a conversation, they'll pick up with you. But the test will say uh, th th what the bottom line is there. The uh, transmit in place of CQ will be your call sign. Sending your call sign using CW or phone emission are both methods of the call sign identification required for station transmitting signals. You may notice by listening to some repeaters, you'll, you'll hear their um, call sign automatically on uh, uh, CW, uh, that fast burst of, t of uh, CW that you hear. That's the call sign being transmitted. The CTSS tone is a subaudible tone Transmit it with normal voice audio when you open the squelch of the, or to open the squelch of the receiver. This tone helps to stop interference between stations on the same frequency. And um, I don't know how many of you have monitored uh, repeaters in this area. One common area of uh, interference, or it's not interference because it's legally licensed, but uh, for the distance is the uh, Westchester, New York, and the Schenectady repeaters. Uh, Schenectady doesn't use the PL tone, but you can hear the, so at times you can hear Westchester conversation on the Schenectady repeater. Uh, the CTSS tones are up in the upper right-hand corner in red. Uh, they're standardized from uh, 67 uh, uh, hertz up to 264.1. Uh, so as you flip through, most radios have them in their software today or their firmware. And for instance, there's a chart on the bottom there with uh, Lake George W2WCR with 100.0 uh, CTCSS tone, commonly referred to as a PL tone. The frequency coordinator is the entity that recommends the transmit receive uh, channels parameters for auxiliary repeater stations. The frequency coordinator selected by the amateur radio operators in the local or regional area where the stations are eligible to be licensed. Okay, thank you for joining us. And oh, this is the question time period. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Questions and answers. These are test questions that could show up. What type of amateur station simultaneously retransmits the signal of another amateur station in a different channel or channels? C, repeater station. What type of amateur radio stations can automatically retransmit the signal of another amateur radio station? B. Correct. Which of the following describe the common meaning of the term repeater offset? Correct. The difference between the repeater's transmit and receive frequencies. What is the most common repeater frequency offset on the two meter band? B, plus minus 600. Some are plus, some are minus uh, because it gets crowded out there. And there's a system to it where um, a certain level of frequency is plus and a certain level is minus. That's why some of the newer radios automatically decide that for you. But it is listed on the uh, repeater book or whatever repeater reference that you're using. 
What is the common repeater frequency offset for the 70, me, uh, 70 centimeter band? A, 5 megahertz. Which of the following common problems might cause you to be able to hear but not access the repeater even when transmitting the proper offset? All of the above are correct. What is the term used to describe the use of a sub-audible tone transmitted with the normal voice audio to open the squelch of the receiver? D, the CTCSS. What brief statement is often transmitted in place of CQ to indicate that you are listening on a repeater? your call sign. Which of the following uh, which of the following entities recommend the transmit receive channels and other parameters for auxiliary and repeater stations? The frequency coordinator. Who selects the frequency coordinator? That would be C, the amateur radio community, basically. The amateur radio operators in the local area. That's kind of a tricky. You always think the, go the government does it, but. What method of call sign identification is required for station transmitting phone signals? That would be B, using CW or phone emission. Emergency. Below are a few ways to describe the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, or RACES. A radio service using amateur radio frequencies, management, or civil defense communications. A radio service using amateur stations for emergency management, or the uh, civil defense communications. An emergency service using amateur radio operators certified by the Civil Defense Organization as being enrolled in the organization. The difference between RACES and ARIES, RACES you need to be certified and ARIES you need to be registered. Key words here are the Civil Defense. You must register to take part in RACES. Or, so just think of the R, RACES, R, register. The Amateur Radio Service Aries that they just referred to, licensed amateurs who have voluntarily, voluntarily registered their equipment and are willing to use it uh, in the duty of public service. Aries service is not as formal as RACES in Mars and is often a local service of non-government organizations. So, test question. So what do RACES and ARIES have in common? Both organizations may provide communications during emergencies. The FCC rules always apply when operating the emergency station, or your amateur station. You are bound by FCC rules, so you're operating under the local ARIES or RACES group does not interfere with obeying the FCC rules. One thing to keep in mind, when do FCC rules apply? Always. The FCC rules always apply when operating your amateur radio station. You are bound by the FCC rules, so just operating under your local areas of RACES group does not relieve you from the responsibility of obeying FCC rules. If you have checked in, in, in if you have checked in during the emergency traffic net, uh, net be sure you remain on frequency without transmitting until asked to do so by the net control station. Check in just once and don't transmit again until you're recognized. The, uh, that is on the question, or that is a test question. So you check in, tell everybody you're there, and wait for them to, to, to tell you to do something. An accepted practice to get immediate attention in the net control station when you're operating an emergency is begin your transmission and saying priority or emergency followed by your call sign. Just make sure your communication is 
priority or emergency. Radiogram. The term check in a formal traffic message is the count of the number of words or word equivalents in the text portion of the message. To ensure the voice message traffic containing proper names and unusual words are copied correctly by the receiving station, such words and terms should be specified and spelled out using standard phonetic alphabet. Practice makes perfect and character characteristic of good emergency traffic handling are passing emergency messages exactly as received. What you see up there in red is right from the test questions. Or is the answer for, there's the answer to the questions. Only if necessary in station involving immediate safety of human life or protection of property are amateur radio operators ever permitted to operate outside the frequency privileges of their class. The question pool from the emergency. Okay. Um, the port of our emergencies, remember Puerto Rico. Nothing went out of Puerto Rico because they had no power. The only thing going out were amateur radio messages coming out of Puerto Rico, going into Puerto Rico, health and welfare messages. Vitally important in this hobby. Sometimes it is only us that can. Um, get these messages through. Um, as you'll see, we'll try it at 1 o'clock. We have a traffic net on the 146-910. Um, I actually do have a piece of traffic that I'm going to try to get out today if we can get out with it. But um, as part of the hobby, always try to, and I, I, have, I can schedule somebody myself or the actual section uh, traffic manager for New York to come and do a NTS traffic handling um, program. You know, if you get into the No Bark Club or you get down to the Army Clubs, we can do that. Thanks. Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. Okay. Test questions. Which of the following is an accepted practice to get the immediate attention of the net control station when reporting an emergency? Begin with your transmission with priority or emergency following your call sign. That was a tough one for me because I came in the old days of Mayday, but it's now emergency. Which of the following is an accepted practice for an amateur operator who has checked into an emergency traffic net? C. Remain, check in and remain on the frequency until you're told otherwise. When the FCC rules, you know, when do the FCC rules not apply to the operation of an amateur radio station? D. FCC rules always apply. Which of the following describes the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service or RACES? D. All of the above. As you remember, this RACES is, is certified and ARIES is registered. Okay, there's there. I think I just answered that question for you. Licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their uh, qualifications and equipment for co communications duty in the public service is ARIES. What do RACES and ARIES have in common? D, both organizations may provide communi communications during emergencies. Are amateur radio station control operators ever permitted to operate outside the frequency privileges of their class? Yes, in a bona fide emergency in protection of human life or property. What is the preamble in a formal traffic message? D, the information needed to track the message as it passes through the amateur radio traffic handling system. Which of the following is a characteristic of good emergency traffic handling?
passing it exactly as it is received, word for word, number for number. You, you never know what the originator had in mind. What should be done to ensure the voice message traffic containing proper names and unusual words are copied? At, spelled using standard phonetic alphabet. What is meant by the term check in reference to a formal traffic message? A, the number of words or words equivalent in the message. That way you know if you've missed something and didn't get it word for word. Okay, thank you for joining us, and uh, see you next time.